So I'm talking about contributing to Julia. How many of you have not made a documentation or a code change to Julia or any of its packages? Excellent. I was worried there won't be enough people, but you are the audience for my talk, so if you just raised your hand, please continue to pay attention. Uh, if you didn't, there's some stuff for you, but you're not the you know, focus of the talk. So contributing to Julia, I'm going to have three sections, community, documentation, and code. Of course, contributing to Julia is like contributing to any other open source project, so all of the you know, advice applies if you find it elsewhere, since it is just another open source project. Um, the goal of this talk is to, if you haven't already, or if you have, convince you to make a documentation or a code change, hopefully by the end of the conference. Um, that is a doable goal, I promise. So, community. Uh, we're all part of the community, and you know, you're participating in it just by attending JuliaCon. The you know, community sort of, contributing to the community includes like answering questions on the mailing list or asking them, uh, participating in Stack Overflow, coming to JuliaCon, organizing JuliaCon, or meetups and speaking at them, or any time you talk about Julia like publicly or privately. Um, and so when you are doing any of those things, you should remember to be friendly and polite, which we're all pretty good at. You know, generally, we're proud of being you know, a friendly, welcoming community. Um, but that is an important like, tenant. You know. Um, the other thing that you know, I sometimes struggle with is not overselling Julia. It's important to be honest both about the like, problems and the like, good parts. Uh, and if you get really excited, sometimes you can convince people that they should try Julia when it really isn't ready for them yet. Uh, and that just makes it worse because now they won't want to try it when it is ready for them. Um, another part is documentation. Uh, this includes official documentation like readmes, the manual, help entries, package documentation, uh, and also sort of community documentation like blog posts, tutorial videos, talk videos, all that kind of stuff. Um, so this is the, the, the practical portion. So I'm going to show you how to fix the, you know, the sort of minimal documentation change, fixing a typo in a readme. And this is a you can do this too. You, this is a replicable algorithm. So we're going to pick a Julia package. I picked github.jl because I played with it before. Um, and now we need to find a problem. I have an algorithm for this. So we're going to go to the readme file. We're going to click on raw. And we're going to copy paste the readme into docs, because unlike GitHub, doc, Google Docs has a spell checker. So we scroll down, and we're looking for red. And we found one that is not in code, so labels this misspelled here. Uh, and so now we need to go back and fix it. This is also pretty easy. We go back to GitHub to that file. We click on the pencil icon. Uh, this will take you to a text editor. Just like Notepad, you can just click right there and edit the label to uh, edit the text to not have a typo anymore. Then at the bottom, it'll have a form. You just put, you know, I fixed the typo in the title, and then you're ready to click the big green button. There's going to be several big green buttons involved in this process. Uh, this is the next one. So this page is summarizing the change you're making. Um, I don't have time to explain the whole page right now in just a lightning talk, but basically it's telling you the change you made and it's showing you below it'll have a diff so you can review what exactly you changed on that file. Click the big green button again. Now we have, if it will show you, it'll have pre-filled in the title from your commit. Uh, and so you just, you're, here you're making the pull request. So this is the actual request to the repository so that someone with the power to do so will accept your change. So you click the big green button again. And now this is our pull request. So this part I've highlighted, this is the part saying, you know, the tests are running. It's the readme, but uh, the system doesn't know that, so it's running all of the software tests. Um, and it says that it can be merged. And the fact that it can be merged means that someone with the power has a green, big green button that if they click it, my change will be merged. Um, so you wait. Sometimes it can take a few days, depending on the project. Uh, I got mine in the same day, and so now it's all purple because it's been merged. Uh, and so at this point, that means you finished your first contribution, and it's all done. Your, the typo is fixed in the readme. And that was the first uh, package that came to mind. So I think if you go through some of our hundreds of packages, there's bound to be more typos that you can fix. <coughs> um, and, so that's, and you can apply this to any contribution to the official docs. Basically, all of them are in GitHub, and all of them are text files on GitHub, which means all of them will let you do that, where you go and you edit, and then make your pull request all through GitHub. You can also go through Git, but that's much too that's like too complicated for a lightning talk. <laughs> There's too many pitfalls. But this is one through GitHub. You can change any of the official documentation. There's also community documentation. So this includes blog blogs, such as yeah, which are uh, syndicated on JuliaBloggers.com. Uh, there is like meetups, 
or there's you know speaking at other conferences, other both including and other than JuliaCon. And these are all like also very important. Like it's important like to have community documentation because it serves a different purpose. So if you've done anything in Julia that you're excited about, you should write a blog post about it or make a YouTube video or give a talk or whatever. Like you, if you've done anything in Julia, you have enough information to write a blog post. And someone else who wants to do something related will like appreciate having your blog post to guide them. Um, and so I'm going to talk about the last part, the code. Um, and so I'm concluding report a bug in here, because otherwise I don't really have enough to talk about about code, because it gets too in-depth if you try to debug a bug in two minutes. Uh, so, but the important thing is, you know, basically everyone in this room should be reporting bugs. Uh, and so this is op specifically opening an issue on the GitHub repo, whichever one seems most relevant, because that's going to give you a faster response than posting on a mailing list. Um, and so the important thing is when you're making your bug, you should pick an informative title. You should try to include any version numbers that seem relevant. The Julia version, your operating system version, your package versions, whatever you think is, could be relevant. Um, and you need to describe clearly what happens, when it happened, what if it just started happening, when it happen started doing that, and what you expect it to happen. So I've got two example bug reports here. I picked the ones that were short enough to be on my slides. So you can go like, look at his other bu bug reports if you want like, infinite good examples of bug reports. So this one has a very nice title that basically summarizes the whole bug report. It includes a piece of example code, and it includes what the error was that he's seeing, which makes it easier for other people to replicate and make sure they're saying, seeing the same thing, the same problem. This one includes what Julia versions it, you know, he's replicated the problem on, and also has you know, a very nice code example that's easy for somebody else to run and see that, make sure that they're seeing the same thing. Um, I'm not going to really talk about code, more code because I'm running out of time. Um, but if you want like, an easy up for grabs issue, this first one is, a list, this is about testing. And it has a lot of different, it's, you know, a lot of people can you know, do more testing stuff as part of that issue. Um, yeah, I just want to reiterate, uh, community documentation and code are all ways to contribute and are all equally important and valuable. I um, mean, obviously, there wouldn't be a project without code. But beyond that, they're all like, equally valuable at this point. Um, Happy to ask your questions now. And like, you could also ask anybody else who's like a package or core Julia maintainer, because they're also great resources for knowing what they want to accept. Uh, package documentation? I mean, uh, do you encourage like, uh, contributing documentation when we are a user, uh, like an experienced user of a package? Mm -hmm. And is there a preferred way to write the documentation? Um, so you're asking about package documentation and like who writes it? or? Oh, if I want, I, I use a lot, let's say, social editor. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I find the documentation is not so great. I want to contribute. How, how yeah. So it varies by package. So you have to go, usually if you go, so he's asking about as an experienced user, he'd like to contribute to the, a documentation of a package he likes to use. So you, that's different for every package because there's not really a cohesive system. Um, usually that starts with a readme. Every package has a readme, so that's usually the first place. If the, the some packages have an additional website with documentation, and the, ac and the way they have that set up varies by package. So but there should be documentation either in the you know, readme of the package itself, or you can open an issue on the GitHub repo, and they should be able to tell you how to contribute to the documentation. They'll probably be very happy to. Most packages need more documentation. All packages, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you, Sam. Thank you.